welcome back to my channel and thank you very much for stopping by. I hope you're all keeping well and staying safe. Before we jump into this, I just want to say thank you very much to everyone who has watched my previous video, liked it, subscribed to my channel, and off the back of that, followed me on Instagram as well. If you did all three, you're an absolute legend. If you haven't seen my last video, I'm going to link it at the end of this, and I'm also going to put it down below in the description. So I'm going to be showing you my entire sneaker collection, and I've never done anything like this before, but in previous videos that I've made, I'd always get comments and questions saying, what is that trainer behind you, or where do you get those Nikes, where do you get those Yeezys? So for one, I'll just talk you through the whole collection and show you, because I think for the first time ever, every shelf is completely full. Like there's actually another shelf up there and another two shelves down there that you can't see. So for one, I just sort of give you a whistle stop tour through each trainer. Just before we get started, I do want to say I don't really consider myself a sneakerhead. Yes, I love trainers and I've got a few pairs, but I don't have over 100 or anything crazy like that. I don't just buy trainers for the sake of it or to have them in a collection. Every trainer I buy is because I like it and I intend to wear it. My collection is predominantly made up of Nike trainers, so I think the best way to do this is if we work from the top and then just go down. I won't spend too long in each trainer, maybe like 20 to 30 seconds, and then just go from there. That being said, let's move on to the first trainer. Get up my tiptoes and grab that. So we're gonna start with the Nike P6000s. And to be honest, I haven't really worn this as much as I would have intended to. I had the idea to wear them with a really cool pair of trousers, but I haven't actually got the trousers just yet, so I'm wearing them with jeans every now and again. And I think this is like a really sick trainer. It dropped last year, and I just love the detailing on it, it's pretty mad. Um, I also read Shoe Dog by Phil Knight, which is basically the book about how Nike was created. And there's a really nice bit of detailing just there on the tongue, I'll show you there. Hopefully you guys can see that. It says Bowerman series. I think it's a really nice subtle touch because Bill Bowerman was a co-creator of Nike. Moving on to the Nike Daybreak in this really cool black, gray, and metallic silver colorway. The swoosh is a really nice metallic silver and I think that's really nice detailing. I really like how these shoes look from like a bird's eye view as well. Major sapphire vibes right there. And um, same with the P6000, I haven't really worn it that much. Um, I do intend to wear it a lot more coming up to summer, maybe with shorts, but I worn it a few times with jeans and it looks pretty cool. Moving on to the Nike Daybreak Undercover in this really sick yellow and grey colourway. I'm just going to move it up to the camera so you guys can get a closer look. Really nice detailing on that, really nice leather swoosh as well, and really nice nylon yellow. Beautiful. Look at the heel as well, it's mad. I've never seen a trainer like this before, so that's what initially sort of drew me into it. I think this was a massively slept on trainer. It dropped in June 2019 in various colourways, all very cool and great for summer. And uh, it was around about the same time as the Sakai's dropped. So I can assume a lot of people may be putting their money into them or waiting for them to release. But I didn't pick these up till like September off the Nike website. So they were sitting for a long time. But it's a very cool trainer nonetheless. Now this next trainer is probably the first one that has a little bit of hype around it. And yes, that is the Nike Vapor Fly or Vapor Street, whatever you want to call it. They dropped in November 2019. I did intend to leave this trainer looking nice and fresh for summer. That is if we get a summer with this COVID-19 pandemic. But if we are eventually allowed outside, I will definitely be rocking these non-stop. I just think the colours are so nice. I'm going to go a bit closer to the camera so you guys can see. I'm thinking of definitely getting rid of that and possibly this excess lacing as well. And there you go, you've got the side view and there's the sole. What do you guys think about these little spikes as well? Let me know what you think down below in the comments. So this next trainer is actually the newest addition to my collection and that is the Jordan 1 Low in this really sick gym red colorway. I think it's massively been slept on. I picked these up quite easily from Foot Locker and uh, I'm pretty sure I see them on the Nike website as well. So um, if you guys want a really sick Jordan 1 colorway for summer, jump on Foot Locker or Nike, I'm pretty sure it will still be on there. I just think the Jordan 1 high and low are such popular trainers right now. So if you can easily pick up a pair, it's a massive win. This is my first Jordan 1 low, and I was always a bit concerned about the quality, but there's really nice embroidery on the back. The stitching's all really cool. The leather's nice and soft, so only time will tell, but early impressions are very good. This next trainer, oh my God, I've tried so hard to get this. I finally have it, and it's my favorite a trainer out the whole collection and that is the Nike Jordan 1 Retro High in the Obsidian colorway. These are so sick. I cannot tell you how hard it has been to try and get this trainer in my size and at an affordable price because unfortunately I had to pay resale on this. This is the only trainer in my whole collection I've actually paid resale for. I'm certain I signed up for every raffle humanly possible to try and get hold of these at retail, but of course I took a massive L. If you took a win on any raffle, let me know what one it is down below in the comments and what is your secret. The reason why I love this trainer so much 
It's because the leather is so nice and soft. It's proper buttery leather. And the details are really nice as well. The colors are great and it's just such a sick trainer to wear with trousers, jeans, shorts. You can wear it all the time. Before we move on to the next trade, I wanna give you guys more of a close up look just so you can appreciate it for yourself. So there you go, really nice leather there. Colors are mad. I just love how these look from like every angle. If you follow me on Instagram, you know I posted a really sick bird's eye view of these. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, please do. Moving on to the last of the Nike trainers in my collection. And that is the Nike Blazer Mid in the vintage white colorway. What a great trainer to have in your sneaker collection. And uh, the price point is so affordable. I think these were 90 pounds. I picked these up from Offspring when they first released in September. Here's a little close up view for you guys. Great trainer very affordable. If you're working on more of a budget, definitely look to pick up a Nike blazer. They just sit well with everything. So that's it, we're done with Nike. We're gonna move on to Converse now. And the first Converse we have is a pretty special one, if I'm honest, and that is the Converse Times Essentials collaboration. And I just think these are so sick. They only dropped about a month ago, and um, I've never actually seen a Converse like this with the um, lacing detail going around the back. To be honest, for years, I've really not been into Converse. But over the last year, I've, I've kind of got back into it and um, they are great essential trainers that I think everyone should have in their collection. I haven't even worn these yet. I need to wear them. Outfit pick coming soon. Let me just quickly show you guys the details. As you can see, you've got the Fear of God Essentials branding on the heel. Moving around, you've got my favorite feature of the shoe. So this is like two contrasting colors. You've got the gray canvas and then the whole tongue is this really nice soft leather in like a cream colorway. And then another part of the shoe, which I love, you've got this bit of fabric there, which allows you to tuck the laces round. And I see loads of people styling their Converse while wrapping the laces round, which I think looks really cool. So it's nice to see that they've jumped on that. We're gonna move on to another Converse, and that is the Converse JW Anderson collaboration. Oh my God, these are absolutely beats to death. I need to give these a little bit of a clean, if I'm honest. But yeah, really clean trainer, absolutely love these. This was actually the first Converse I bought in like five, six years maybe. And um, I love JW Anderson as a brand, and they've done a really nice capsule collection for their Converse collab. And uh, yeah, I really recommend checking that out, but you just can't go wrong with the black and white colorway. I'm just gonna give you guys a quick close-up of the branding. Apologies in advance for looking at all these scuffs. But as you can see there, really nice JW Anderson branding, all in like this really cool multi-print going around, even on the tongue, very nice. And then you can probably faintly just see some JW Anderson stitch in there. Very, very cool indeed. Moving on to my third Converse trainer, and that is the Converse Runstar Hike. No joke, these are so comfortable. I was expecting these to be really hard, give me blisters, really rugged, but no joke, that sole is just, it is so comfortable. I can't even begin to explain, you need to get a pair. The Runstar Hike was originally part of the JW Anderson collaboration. They did their own version of this. This is not that trainer. Converse recently decided to drop it on their own. I think based on the success that that trainer had. They originally released it in the black and white colorway, but I've seen online that they're gonna be dropping it in a few different colors. I can't see myself wearing these throughout summer. These are definitely more of like an autumn winter shoe. Moving on to the first designer trainer in my collection, and that is the Balenciaga track sneaker. This used to be my favorite trainer in my whole collection. I'm pretty sure I went two to three months non-stop wearing these every day. As a result of that, they've had a fair bit of wear and tear. So uh, I thought I'd better just leave them alone for a little while. I do get a lot of questions about these in terms of how comfortable they are, if they're a practical trainer. Um, I'll be honest, they're not very practical. They're quite heavy. And um, personally for me, they wasn't very comfortable when I first bought them, so I did have to wear them in for a little bit, but um, they do look so sick on. I personally think that I maybe went a bit too small in terms of sizing. Uh, they advise usually going one size down, and I can confirm that. Uh, I'm usually like a men's six and a half to seven, so I decided to go for a men's five, which I know sounds mental, but all Balenciaga trainers, Triple S and Track fit huge, so you've definitely got to go a size down. And there you go guys, there is a little close up of the trainer. Definitely need to give these a little bit of a clean. Got some nice branding on the tongue, track branding on the back, Balenciaga branding on the sides, and you've got two laces going on there. And uh, yeah, I mean, if you're into high-end trainers, I would definitely recommend these. Moving on to the second designer trainer in my collection, and that is the Palm Angels Recovery Sneaker. And to be perfectly honest, these are pretty much like Marmite. You either love these or you hate them. Unfortunately, I don't think this trainer connected too well with the consumer. Uh, it's based on a cycling trainer, so it is very different. I mean, the sole is absolutely huge. It's very chunky and uh, the straps are very different. Not a lot of people are doing this kind of design, which is what kind of drew me to it. I really like these. 
Um, I did try and wear them with jeans and trousers, and to be honest, they didn't look too good. So these are definitely more of like a summer shoe for me. With shorts, they look great. I'm not really into designer trainers, but I'll be honest, they did stand out to me. I think the details are really nice. Have a closer look there. You've got the recovery on the heel tabs there. Nice big chunky sole. Nice detail in there. Palm Angels branding on the straps. And yeah, let me know what you think down below in the comments. Moving on to arguably the best Yeezy ever made, and that is the Yeezy 700 Wave Runner. This trainer caused so much controversy when it first dropped. Everyone was hating on it because it was chunky, but that was around the time where chunky trainers were very popular, and I think still are. When you really look at this trainer and break it down, the use of color, fabric, it's incredible. No one would ever have put these colors together. So for me, it's definitely one of the best Yeezys they've ever made. As you can see, you've got tons of Nubuck suede, mesh, leather, and boost technology. Great trainer. On to the next trainer, and that is New Balance 530. Absolutely love this colorway, very sick. This is actually a running trainer, and it's a clear running trainer. But I feel like New Balance have massively broken on to the fashion scene over the last two years. So I'm seeing tons of people within the streetwear community wearing this style of trainer. I think they're so popular. I think the great thing about New Balance trainers is that they match like the minimal aesthetic that people are trying to go for. And another great thing is that they're actually very affordable. I think these are only about 80 pounds. But I just really like the use of the yellow and the silver and gray. I think it's very nice. There's a few detailed looks of the trainer. So yeah, it's the New Balance 530. And I picked these up from ASOS. So have a look on ASOS, they might still be on there. This is my second favorite shoe in my whole collection, and that is the New Balance 990. Yes, this is the OG dad trainer. I think the, um, the branding when this trainer first dropped it was something like worn by supermodels in London and dads in Ohio. So the thing with this trainer, not only is it ridiculously comfortable, the colors are absolutely beautiful. This is a little bit higher in terms of price point on the New Balance spectrum. I think these are around about 180 pounds, but I can guarantee they're worth every penny. I wear these all the time and I would thoroughly recommend them. Have a little closer look. As you can see, absolutely beautiful. So we're gonna be moving on to the last three trainers now, and they're all gonna be Vans. So this is my little Vans collection. First trainer up, we have the Vans Rude collaboration, and these are so cool, they're an instant sellout and end clothing. I've only ever really bought old school Vans and slip-ons, so this silhouette is completely different, which kind of drew me towards it, and I love Rude as well. This particular van is part of the LX collection, and I don't know if you guys know this, but the LX have slightly thicker soles, and personally, I think they fit a little bit bigger. So I probably should have gone a half size down in these. I've got a seven, which I usually wear in old schools, and they're just a little bit too big. But nonetheless, I can still wear them. And uh, yeah, I just think it's a great sneaker for the collection. Looking forward to wearing these throughout summer. I'm gonna give you guys a little detailed look. As you can see, really nice Rude California branding on the sole. And uh, yeah, very sick. Next up is the old schools in the black and white colorway. Everyone in the world should have this trainer. It's like 45, 50 pounds. It looks good with absolutely every outfit. And if you look after them, they last for years. Last trainer in the collection, and it's another old school van, but this time in the checkerboard colorway. And if you guys can look very closely, you can see it's actually a collaboration. It's the Vans times DSM, so that is Dover Street Market. And they do that collaboration every year. They do it in a high top and a low top. I decided to go for the low because I just think they're a bit more practical. And uh, yeah, a very nice, easy trainer to wear. And that is my entire sneaker collection. 18 pairs right there. I'd say my top three have to be the Jordan 1 High and the Obsidian colorway. Absolutely love these. And then number two, it's got to be the New Balance 990. Very sick colorway and it goes with absolutely everything. And then number three, I know I sounded like I hated on these a little bit, but it has to be the Balenciaga V1 track. Might not be everyone's cup of tea, but looking back, I've worn it so much and I really do like it. Just before we finish the video, I do want to say I know 18 pairs of trainers is a little bit excessive. And I'd hate for you guys to watch this video and go, oh my God, I need to go and purchase that trainer, that trainer, just so I can create a collection. Don't. These are trainers that I've acquired over the last two to three years. And I do work in the fashion industry, so I do get a little discount, which definitely helps. You should only really buy a trainer, in my opinion, if you like it and that you know you're definitely gonna wear it. I would love to know what you guys think of my collection. So in the comments down below, let me know if you can only have three of these trainers what will they be? In the description, I'm gonna link a load of stores that I buy my trainers from. Also, other stores that I know always have good collections and good stock. So if you're interested in that, go and have a look. Lastly, I just wanna say thank you very much if you watched the whole of this video. Please don't forget to smash the like button because it really helps. And also to subscribe to my channel. My name is Charlie and I'll see you soon.